Clean Technica are predicting that the UK will reach 50% plug-in share by the end of 2022. That, my friends, is well beyond the tipping point. This is exciting news. Hope you've had a great day. And this is capped off by even better news here for people in the UK. Welcome to the channel. My name is Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back to everyone else. Great to have you. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. This channel really wouldn't be possible without you or what you do. It helps us to basically be able to make these videos. It does take a lot of work, a lot of time to do this every day. And obviously I have a number of staff working with me to help me to produce all of these videos every day. The UK has started 2022 above 20% 20 plug-in EV share. It might end close to 50%, says Maximilian Holland, from Clean Technica. Now, I don't know if you guys know Maximilian Holland, but I highly recommend his journalism. He does some really impressive articles at Clean Technica. You should go there and check him out, as well as Steve Hanley and John Asida, three excellent writers at Clean Technica, and I highly recommend their website. The UK saw plug in electric vehicle share hit 20.4% in January 2022. That's up from 13.7% in January 2021. But the better news here, is what's going on all over the world right now. It's in fact, every country that I've looked at the numbers in, the same phenomenon is happening. Full battery electrics doubled their share year on year to 12.5%. So you can see plug-in hybrid sales are declining. So are diesels. They're basically dying a fast death. Diesels continued their retirement walk with just 5.2% share from 12.3% year on year. So they've gone from 12.3% last January to 5% this January. Diesels could be dead by the end of the year in the UK. And across much of Europe, we're seeing the same thing play out. Overall auto volumes recovered slightly from last year, but were still down by around a quarter from long-term seasonal norms at 115,000 units. I think there's something else going on here. I want to know what you guys think, if you agree with this or not. I think electric mobility is starting to change the way people look at getting around. I think we're seeing a lot of electric bikes being sold, a lot of electric scooters, all kinds of different electric mobility, which means you don't necessarily need to have a car now to get somewhere quickly and easily. That could be affecting car sales as well as this so-called supply chip, this chip shortage, because why else would so many electric car manufacturers in China not be having any issues with getting enough chips, or at least it appears as though they're not anyway. January's combined plug-in result of 20.4% comprised 12.5% battery electrics and 7.9% plug-in hybrids. This 61 to 39 weighting, it represents a slight dent to what we would have expected because Tesla doesn't have any vehicles in the UK right now. They send them at the start of the month, they'll arrive in the third month of the year. It's going to be really interesting to see how many vehicles Tesla actually sends to the UK because every one of those will be bought. A year ago, the two categories were evenly weighted though. Since then, electric vehicle share has nearly doubled from 7% in January 2021 to 12.5% last month. Plug-in hybrids, meanwhile, only grew from 6.8 to 7.9% share over the same period. So you can see what I was talking about before. For example, in China, more than 85% of all NEVs or new energy vehicles sold are fully electric. Electric vehicles are thus the outstanding growth story in the UK auto market. The same thing is happening, like I said, all over Europe. Smoothing out the monthly variance, the trailing quarters plug-in share stands at 27.1%, up from 18.3% year on year. BEVs alone constitute over two thirds of that at 18.2% from 11.4% last year. Petrol only powertrains had a slight reprieve in January. That's really just thanks to the fact that Tesla is not selling any electric vehicles right now in the UK. But they've still lost a relative 10% of their share year on year from 49.8% down to 44.7%. As diesels get out of the way, we can expect the continued growth of plug-ins, particularly electric ones, to eat into petrol-only share ever more strongly over the next few years. Plugless hybrids, both HEV and 48 volt mild, are the closest stepping stone for laggard manufacturers to hop to on the way to full electrification. And they grew from 24.2% to 29.7% share year on year. Obviously, these have no long-term future either. 
So don't buy one. That's my recommendation. Seriously. As the industry moves towards all plug-ins and eventually to all electric vehicles, those vehicles will lose a lot of their value. You're essentially dragging around two different powertrains when you don't really need two. You only need one. Now, that especially goes for people in the UK. I mean, why on earth would you buy a plug-in hybrid with a petrol engine in it in the UK? There's just no way you'd possibly need that. It's a tiny island. I'm, I'm criticizing it. I'm from the UK. My dad was born there and he came over to Australia when he was seven years old. But realistically, it is. I've been there. It's a small place. You can get from one end to the other in no time at all. How do I know that? Well, I actually rode my bike from one end to the other. So yeah, there's that. Now, the UK's most popular electric vehicle brands in January, with Tesla habitually absent at the start of the quarter due to juggling international logistics, Kia, Mercedes, and Volkswagen took the top three spots in the monthly brand rankings. Kia took 14.2% of the market, Mercedes took 10.5%, Volkswagen 8.4%, Hyundai 7.1%, Audi 6.9%, BMW 6.6%, and Vauxhall 58 Then Skoda was next with 5 and obviously Skoda is owned by Volkswagen. Then we got Ford with 4.4%. In a right-hand drive market though, like the UK, Maximilian says there's plenty of variability to monthly delivery shipments across many brands. So the above shares don't really reliably indicate long-term patterns. We can take a step back and look at the trailing quarter performances for a more stable view of which brands the UK's electric vehicle buyers are choosing. And far and away, it is Tesla, with 21% of the overall market over the past three months. Volkswagen is next with 7.8%. After that, you've got Kia with 7%, then Audi with 65 BMW is 6.2, Mercedes 6.1, Hyundai 5.6, Vauxhall 4.5, Nissan 4.4, Mini 4, MG 3.8, Peugeot 3.4, Skoda 2.9. So clearly Tesla is continuing to dominate, even though they're completely absent from EV sales in January. And they took though 21% of UK electric vehicle market in the past three months. That's three times the share of the runner-up Volkswagen. However, Volkswagen does own a series of other brands. So if you combine those together, they're close to Tesla's number. Remember, the Tesla Model 3 was the second highest selling vehicle in the overall UK market in 2021. It's expensive in the UK right now. I mean, they have to import it from China. When they're building these in Germany, I think the price is going to come down a bit, but it is expensive. So I am legitimately shocked that this vehicle was the second highest selling vehicle, period, full stop in the UK in 2021. Now, full credit to you guys in the UK. I've got to say, I really admire your commitment to electric cars because it takes a lot of coin to buy a Tesla in the UK. Kudos to you. Well done. Of the other volume brands, BMW, Mercedes, Nissan, and Mini have been steadily climbing the ranking since the third quarter of last year. Shout out to Porsche's climb also, though it's not a volume brand. Over 31% of Porsche's January UK sales were electric and many of the others were plug-in hybrid, far ahead of the overall market. Isn't it interesting that a sports car brand is going electric even faster than almost all mainstream brands, almost all legacy automakers? You know, all these naysayers said that wouldn't happen. They said, no, 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 because the emotion and the soul is an elect of, a, of a performance car is the engine. Well, it looks like buyers seem to disagree with that idea. Other brands which are significantly growing over the past half year and worth keeping an eye on a Polestar and Volvo, though they are still in the second half of the table, each less than a tenth of Tesla's volumes. However, their parent company, Geely, does plan on producing a lot more EVs this year than they did last year. So hopefully we'll see some significant increases from them. Now, getting back to Porsche for a second, an idea just came to my head. Porsche doesn't make an electric Macan. They don't make an electric Cayenne. They don't make an electric 911. The majority of their vehicles don't come as electric. And still, 32% of all Porsche shells in the UK were fully electric. So when you think about it, imagine if all those different models from Porsche came with an electric option. That number could be 80 or 90%. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens once the Porsche Boxster, the 911, the Cayenne, the Taycan, all those cars are full, uh, come with electric options. I think we're going to see a dramatic change. Porsche could be the first sports car company in history to go all EV from being an ICE vehicle company only a matter of a couple of years ago. Tesla estimates that any Model 3 ordered today in the UK can be delivered before the end of March. 
So that's less than two months wait. For Volkswagen Group, on the other hand, many of its electric vehicles have a 12 month waiting list according to reports from UK auto leasing companies. Now, part of the reason for this is the fact that Tesla is producing an astronomical number of vehicles at their factory in Shanghai. They're on a run rate right now based on their December production of about 850,000. That makes it by far the largest producer of electric vehicles in terms of factories in the world. So this is one of the big disadvantages that Legacy Auto have right now. The same long wait applies to several other non-Tesla brands. If Tesla's competitors increase their production volume, they would certainly grab more market share. How much more? Who knows? But the demand for electric vehicles is very high in the UK and all throughout Europe. And only Tesla is so far being 100% serious about tapping into that demand. So what's going to happen in the UK? Maximilian says that electric vehicles are growing strongly in the UK now and should consistently grab around 20% share or higher by June, catching back up to their 2021 Q4 peak share. With plug-in vehicles looking to be treading water, I'm talking plug-in hybrids here, in other words, they're not doing so well, with around 8% share recently, those contributions should give a combined plug-in monthly share of around 30% at the end of the half, first half of this year. In the second half of this year, Maximilian expects that the supply of electric vehicles will improve and perhaps the supply of plugins as well. He estimates that in September, we could see combined plug-in share in the mid 30% range and into the mid 40% range in December, potentially even 50%. This means the full year 2022 plug-in result will work out to around 30% share and above 40% in 2023. This last year, Germany was already at 30%. It's gonna be very interesting to see once more vehicles become available from more legacy auto manufacturers, if we can get this figure up to 50%, by the end of this year, that's gonna be amazing. The UK's industry association, the SMMT, is projecting that 2022 and 2023 will climb back towards 2019's volume of 2.3 million vehicles sold, with 1.9 million and 2.125 million respectively. What does this mean for EVs? Well, a lot more vehicles could be sold that are electric. Maximilian says it's, he thinks those numbers are too ambitious. Given the Osborne effect, he'd expect this year to be around 1.75 million. But regardless, the reality is here, electric vehicles are taking over the UK market. And that is awesome news. The day when the numbers are reversed here, when ICE vehicles are much smaller in terms of their total sales, then electric vehicles is the next logical step, and it's not really that far away. I predict that'll happen in two years' time, in 2024. The sooner we replace ICE vehicles with more efficient electric ones, the better. Have a great day, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.